In this and the following few videos, we are going to look at refraction of light. We know refraction is the bending of light when light moves from one medium into another. Say here is one such pair of media. Here is air and water. And this ray is incident on the boundary between the two. So we'll call this as an incident ray. You can see it is not continuing in a straight line, but rather bending downward like this. So the ray has got bent or refracted. So we'll call this ray as a refracted ray. To study the relationship between them, we'll use a perpendicular drawn to the boundary at the point of incidence. This is called as the normal. And there is a certain relationship between the angle made by the incident ray with the normal called as angle of incidence 40 degrees here and the angle made by the refracted ray with the normal called angle of refraction r over here the ratio of the sine of these two angles is always a constant for a given pair of media say for air and water that ratio will be 1.33 for air and glass, it will be 1.5. For air and diamond, it will be 2.42 and so on. This is called as the refractive index of that pair. So we will always talk about refractive index of air and water, water and glass, glass and some combination. But typically it will be mentioned with respect to air. Let us see how this refraction occurs. So we will move this incident ray and you will see the refracted ray also changes. It also depends upon the media as we talked about. So if we change the refractive index from 1.33 like water to 2.42 that of the diamond, then you will see it bends even more. Now you might be thinking why it bends in a certain way, why it has bent towards the normal and not away from it. That depends upon the so-called optical density of the medium. Water is optically denser than air. So light travels slower in water and therefore the incident ray gets deviated towards the normal. Exactly the opposite thing would happen if the ray is going from a denser medium into a rarer medium, say from water into out into the air. So here we have a ray of light coming from water. So this is our incident ray now and going into air can see it is going away from the normal. You can imagine you are underwater in a pool and this incident ray is going to show you something very interesting. So if you stare in this direction, you will not see something out in the air but the horizon. And if it bends even more, if, then it actually gets turned back into water itself. This is called as total internal refraction. So it is like reflection itself. So when you stare in this direction from underwater, you will not see something in the air, but you would rather see the image of a fish that is swimming here. Total internal reflection sometimes gives a interesting phenomenon called snail's window. So someone swimming underwater, when looks up, sees things outside in the air, but some rays like this would be going towards the horizon and rays like this would be showing reflection of things in water. In fact, this is a three-dimensional phenomenon. So if we rotate this, then it is actually a circle within which the entire world outside is seen. And around that, you will see fish swimming underwater upside down. Of course, we can do better things with total internal reflection than just watch fish swim upside down. We can use it for piping light. In optical fibers, light gets trapped within it because of total internal reflection and then it can be taken wherever needed. It also gives diamonds their shine. Light gets trapped, ins trapped inside because of total internal reflection and then comes out at interesting angle through the facets. And finally, it also gives us an extra rainbow. Total internal reflection within the raindrops causes an additional rainbow above the one that we see in the sky. 